Hey everybody, and welcome to this episode of Transit Tangents. I'm Lewis. And I'm Chris. And today we're going to be talking about all things road diets. Uh, we're going to kind of get into some specific examples near us as well as in other parts of the country and talk about how firefighters have actually come out against bike lanes uh, in LA. We'll get into all the details there. That one surprised me at first, but uh, excited to kind of dig further into it. It did surprise me until I read a little bit deeper and then I, I kind of understood the argument, but... Mm -hmm. We'll see. Yeah, we'll, see. Uh, we'll, we'll get into all the details <laughs> and an interesting article that was uh, written about that. Uh, but to start off, uh, what is a, a road diet? And, and for some folks, too, I, I will say, I know road it's, diet is not necessarily like the, the correct terminology these days. Road the diet is uh, it's choosing subway over raising canes when you're on a road trip. <laughs> That's a road diet. <laughs> I like that. There you go. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Uh, yeah, I mean, that is certainly one example of a road that's diet. A, that's an yes. example. Um, do you have any other examples you're, you're keen um, to share? Well, I started with a thought about, it's when you see a bunch of armadillos on the road, because that is also a term. <laughs> oh <my>. <laughs> <laughs> but for anybody who's not familiar with road diets, mm -hmm. that does not help. Um, yeah, road diets. So we're talking about when you see a four-lane uh, road sort of running through your community, and the city comes in and removes a lane or two and adds wider sidewalks and bike lanes and adds a little bit more protection for the cyclists and pedestrians. Yeah, and it can also involve like, you know, going and adding a turning lane instead or something like that. And there's a whole list of pros and cons. I'm more uh, keen to think that the pros outweigh the cons. Folks will disagree with me, which is fine. That's how things work, I guess. But um, I gonna, agree with you. you agree with me. I agree oh, with you. There we go. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, hopefully many of you do. If you disagree with me, tell me in the comments below. Uh, but uh, I kind of want to start off with a couple examples of where we're seeing it here at home. Um, the most probably notable one in the last year here in Austin is on uh, kind of a major east-west road that is in a part of town where there actually isn't a lot of good east-west connectivity. So this one caused some uh, alarm bells for, for the motorist community at first, I would say. Um, but has proven to be a pretty successful program. Uh, we're talking about Barton Springs Road, if you are from Austin. Um, it is two car lanes in each direction. Uh, it goes through kind of our main city park, Zilker Park. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, the um, <laughs> central park of Austin. Zilker is where we have Austin City Limits Music Festival. We do Trail of Lights. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to do Blues on the Green on Wednesdays. Actually, it's back now. Blues on the Green on Wednesday and during the summer. Nice. Thank you, HEB, for saving it. Um, <laughs> And so it's like this great amenity for the city. Barton Springs Pool, our famous uh, natural swimming pool, is right there. So this is a really high traffic area, especially when it's a nice day. Right. And there are also kind of on this stretch of road leading into the park, there are lots of restaurants, bars, ice cream shops, a, a smoothie place. Like it's a, there are a lot of pedestrians and bikers around as well. There's a lot of connections to the hike and bike trail, which is, uh, you know, serves literally thousands and thousands of people walking, running, biking every single day. And historically, not a wide sidewalk on either side of this major road. As well as a hilariously narrow, kind of scary bike gutter, I will call it. Um, bike gutter. Yes. Uh, so, you know, and, and cars, I would say, did not go slow through here. Um, the street originally had a 35 mile an hour speed limit, and there was actually a big accident in 2022. Uh, a car was going 50 miles an hour through this area, uh, which at the time was 15 miles an hour over the speed limit. Uh, it crashed into, not it, the driver crashed their car into another car, causing that car to be essentially thrown into a crowd of people. Uh, 10 people were seriously injured during this. Uh, and that kind of seems like it was the genesis of the city of Austin deciding to look into how to improve this area. The initial step that they made was lowering the speed limit from 35 to 30. But nobody's going to pay attention to the speed limit sign. Right, exactly. Like when a road is designed as like a pretty straight area with fairly wide lanes, you're going to drive how fast it feels comfortable driving on, not necessarily the speed limit. Um, in so many cities right now, also like traffic laws are basically not enforced by any means at all. Right. Um, so... That didn't have any major impacts, we'll say. Um, but uh, there was some some good news that uh, last, or we're talking basically June or July of last summer, uh, the city announced its intentions to have a one-year pilot program uh, to actually really improve the street. 
um, just before this pilot program got started, they did a bunch of kind of road uh, analysis of how fast people were driving. And despite lowering their speed limit to 30, uh, in a 24 hour period, they had over 70 cars traveling more than 15 miles an hour over the speed limit wow. in that day. So obviously the speed limit change didn't do anything. No. Um, but uh, the plan was kind of made for a road safety pilot. And the initial results, uh, both from the just usability as a biker or a pedestrian, as well as some of the statistics, were, were they're all looking really good right now, basically. Yeah. Also, it is, it's a, a, a beautiful change to the road for anybody who has to walk or cycle down it. Totally. Um, since joining the, the cult of the e-bike. Mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> Cue the, the sound. <laughs> um, it, I have taken that as a, you know, as a pathway through town a couple of times, mm -hmm. and it is so, so nice. Oh, yeah. To have that separation from the street traffic, um, the, there's a, por a portion where the lane um, sort of goes up onto the the bus ramp mm -hmm. for buses when they come by, so you're not having to leave back out into traffic. Um, the whole thing feels so much safer. Right. And until you get to the end of the road. Yes, yeah. And, <laughs> and for those of you watching, we'll make sure that some of the visuals of this are on the screen. For those of you listening, uh, the street basically has narrowed from two lanes in each direction, two car travel lanes down to one car travel lane with uh, separated, uh, sort of separated bike lanes. There's a buffer of a couple feet for most of it uh, with a mixture of flex posts. Uh, I believe they're calling the, the new little humps, I think they're zebras now because they're black oh. and white. I don't know, armadillo, zebra. I call them armadillos. I thought armadillo was a, not a technical term, but like a, a widely <laughs> accepted EOT term. We'll have to, armadillos or zebras, let us know in the <laughs> comment which one you think. Um, and if you don't know what we're talking about, these are the little, they look like armadillo shells mm -hmm. sitting on the side of the road. And if you hit them, you will know that you hit them. Yes. Yep. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's been a combination of kind of all of these different things. And then at the intersections, depending on which intersection it is, they've either kind of kept a, a turning lane. Um, and then unfortunately, at one end of it, when you get to the intersection uh, with Barton Springs and Lamar, which is a major intersection for folks not from here. Lamar is a very busy, wide, scary, dangerous road to bike on uh, <laughs> that has bike gutters. Again, I'll use the term twice here. Uh, at the end there, it feels very uncomfortable. Yeah, again, your, but... your bike lane is in between the turning lane and the lane that's going forward, and yeah. there's no space. No, it's, it's, and cars like to move quickly through, through the area. So they, DOTs assume that bike that cyclists are like a foot wide. Yes, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What's pretty awesome about the pilot so far too is the early results from statistics released by the city so far are super positive in kind of any way you look at it. The one thing that you know was the major concern for folks who lived in the area who primarily drive to get around was they were worried about how much longer their drive times were gonna be, what the traffic was gonna be, how it was gonna hurt the businesses in the area. And what's pretty amazing, uh, and I'm going to quote from a local news article here from KXAN, uh, they, they got an interview with folks working on the project, and they said that five of those six periods on eastbound and westbound, we've seen a reduction in travel times. It's more efficient to get through in the single lane, with the one exception being westbound, there's about 10 seconds of extra delay in the morning. So what we've seen is really significant safety results that we were trying to achieve with minimal impacts of travel time through the corridor. Which... I mean, that's a slam those, dunk win. Those 10 so seconds are really important. That is true. I don't know if you're going to be able to handle uh, arriving to your destination uh, 10 seconds later. Um, the other major win here, uh, the cost of all of the accidents that occurred in the five-year period leading up to this, uh, the city did a study on it, and it cost just under $20 million to the city in terms of like crash damages. That's you know a mixture of police response, first responders, repairs to the roadway, all of this sort of stuff, closures, uh, costing the city roughly $20 million. Um, the cost to put this pilot project together, 700000 Hey, Gondola Gang, thank you so much for listening to this episode. We're going to jump right back in in just a second. But first, if you like what you're hearing, we just want to make sure that you are hitting that subscribe button. Uh, like the video if you haven't done so already. And we also love reading your comments, so please leave a comment. If you're listening, please consider giving us a rating, preferably five stars. I, I hope you think we deserve it, um, but I'll let you be the judge of that. I'll take four with a comment. So like, it, it's a no-brainer. Like, you just, you just do it. Like, mm -hmm. you just do it, even if it's just a pilot, and see what the results are. Right. 
And I'm excited to see what the results are going to be. We're still in this one year phase right now. Uh, I'm really hoping that this pilot program sticks and that they make some of these changes even more permanently. Um, but even if they leave it as it is, the, the, the situation right now with FlexPost, with the armadillos or zebras, we don't know. Zebradillos. <laughs> Zebra, oh, I like zebradillos. Zebradillos. Wow, that's what it should be, um, <laughs> is a major improvement. And we don't have all of the safety data yet for this section, but another road was done in the area recently uh, in the last couple of years. And, you know, on that road, we saw an 82% reduction in injury and fatal crashes, a 46% reduction in total crashes, as well as a 46% reduction in crashes involving people walking, bicycling, or riding scooters. So Which hopefully, this? Uh, this is Pleasant Valley Road um, in, in Austin, kind of uh, at, the, at the bridge uh, over the lake for folks who are from here. This was a road that went from four car lanes, uh, two in each direction, uh, and one car lane was removed in favor of making a much wider uh, protected kind of bike and pedestrian. And I path. also have cycled through there recently, and it is so, so much nicer. Yeah, no, absolutely. But that, that that's just one example uh, of one that is seemingly going pretty well. Yeah. Uh, there haven't been a lot of complaints. I know that the city kind of did a survey partway through this, and the response was, was mostly... Pretty positive. Uh, I saw a very in-depth uh, Reddit thread on the, the Austin subreddit that also had like widely positive response. And usually there are people in the comments and all these things that are, are very, very willing to uh, come out in defense of being able to uh, take their car anywhere with no restriction to what they can do. Well, all. I was going to ask you, have you seen anything on Twitter that's like the anti Zebradillo gang on uh, yeah, Twitter? Yeah, um, I've seen one kind of negative thread on on this on Twitter at one point. Um, there is a local injury attorney uh, uh, who, uh, I will say there's gotta be a little bit of a conflict of interest because if you're an injury attorney, having dangerous roads definitely <laughs> works in your favor. It does sound like a uh, conflict of interest. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's the one who initially pointed this out, but he helped kind of elevate this. Um, there was people who drove by Barton Springs Road on one random day that it was sunny outside and they were like, there's traffic on Barton Springs Road, what a failure. <laughs> and and it, it like the people on Twitter who like to complain about these projects certainly complained about it for about 24 hours and then uh, everybody else who has better things to do uh, moved on with their lives I guess but I guess here we are talking about it so maybe, maybe I don't have better things to do yeah over <laughs> ants I'll save it yeah uh, you looked uh, into another road diet program and then we will get into the firefighters in a second too but I want to hear yeah. about this other road diet that you kind of did some digging into in Iowa. Yeah, so it actually started with me looking at the LA project and looking at how the anti-road diet movement um, was sort of popping up in different communities all over the, the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems like there was a lot of success with a road in, uh, in LA that they actually added a lane back and then that sparked this movement in these other small towns, uh, which then led me to an article about Waverly, Iowa. I don't know how much you know about Waverly, Iowa. <laughs> I know exactly nothing about it. <laughs> uh, I don't know anything about it either. But uh, the Iowa DOT has actually been really active in creating road diets in small towns and has had a really, really positive, um, uh, I guess, a positive success rate makes sense. But they've had a, they've had a really uh, good. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, um, they've, they've had positive results in terms of thank safety. You. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's too early. Uh, they've had really positive results. It's 11 o'clock, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. They've had um, really positive results in regards to safety in most of these small towns. Now, Waverly has complained because they have a lot of traffic on their main street. There is a very vocal group of business owners and residents who are uh, really upset about the new traffic. Um, they're also upset because they feel that the small businesses are going to be harmed. Um, by the extra traffic and, and by these road diets, which when we look at statistics in most cities, that's not the case. Right. Um, however, uh, they also have other road projects going on in New Waverly, including a new bridge that's being built. And once that bridge is built, then traffic will be alleviated from the main street and you should see better, better flow. Gotcha. But this has all come down to uh, a, a massive battle with their city council and their city council is actually standing their ground and saying, no, we're going to keep this program at least until the new bridge is out and then we'll reevaluate. Right. But, you know, there are small communities around the country that are really fighting these kinds of projects. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I think this kind of ties in well with a recent episode that we did where we spoke with a candidate for city council here named Adam Powell. Uh, we'll make sure the link to that episode is here. Um, it's important if you notice changes like this happen in your city. Obviously, with that episode, we talked a lot about how you can engage with your city to try to make those changes happen. But it's also really important when you do see those changes happen to go out and voice your support of them and, and say, hey, this project has made my life better in reasons X, Y, and Z. Um, or, the, you know, I now feel comfortable riding my bike to businesses in downtown where I didn't go before because, uh, you know, I, I didn't have a car and I didn't feel comfortable or whatever your reason may be. Um, looking for when there's these pilot programs actually going and like they're going to ask for feedback partway through. They're going to ask for feedback at the end. Make sure you're actually going and filling those surveys out. Oh, we have an unfortunate one here in Austin right now where uh, a lot of people did not go and fill out a survey. And there's actually a bike lane that's, I, I won't get into the whole thing right now, but that's actually potentially going to be removed from I a street that here. Yeah, to the 31st yeah, yeah, yeah. Street. I yep, did sign yep. it. And I actually filled out the initial form and I thought plenty of people did, but there was a huge majority of folks involved on the other side that did not. Um, not a huge majority. I would actually make the argument that it was pretty 50-50, but um, we'll make the link to that if you're interested in get, getting the details there. But the point being, if you don't stay on top of, you know, when this project comes in, tell your city council members that their support, tell your town manager or whatever the person may be that this has made a, a material impact in your life so that those projects don't get taken away after they've been put into place. I think uh, we we see time and time again, when you look at small towns who've implemented um, sort of recrafting their streets, mm -hmm. uh, where they're adding wider medians, wider sidewalks, trees, bike lanes, you know, patios, that all of this, this sort of redesigning your street to be more people friendly, mm -hmm. it has a positive impact on businesses. People want to be in that space right. and be in that town. When you redesign streets to be uh, people and, and cyclist centric, it does have a positive impact on the, the area mm -hmm. in most cases. Right. And they're making the areas much more of like community gathering places. And yeah. Uh, honestly, uh, and what is a main street other than the community gathering it, place? Exactly, right. It's not meant to be a place for car storage and people speeding through it. It's meant to be a place for you to go and enjoy yeah. and hang out. Um, I will say that uh, Streetcraft, uh, we interviewed uh, Noah from Streetcraft a couple weeks back. Um, he put out a really great video, as usual. As um, always, yeah. On just like the topic of road diets in general. We'll make sure there's a link for that if you want to kind of get into the nitty gritty of like all of the different tools that your city or small town may be able to implement. Um, I think that's a really great resource for you to look at if you're thinking about asking for, hey, my you know main street looks like this, or even my neighborhood street could use a road diet. Because in a lot of cases, there's small things you can do, and it might be a lot less of a fight if you're trying to get a much smaller you know street to get the cars to go a little bit slower, add speed humps or you know a, a safe street, neighborhood street, yeah. whatever whatever your city might call it. We saw so. a lot of that in, during COVID, where the city of Austin, I think a lot of cities, they oh, yeah. took neighborhood streets. Uh, and they shut them down to uh, through traffic, so mm -hmm. only local traffic. And it was so amazing to walk through Austin on some of these streets because the kids went out there and they like drew big like chalk murals mm -hmm. on the the street and like in the intersection. And it just made the neighborhood feel so much nicer, totally, and safer. Yeah. So. But we know that uh, not everybody is in favor of of road diets. We know that uh, that there are guidelines that the federal DOT does put okay. out. Um, specifically around volume of roadway. So mm -hmm. they make suggestions to cities that if you're interested in doing road diets, um, they offer sort of a menu of options. And they tell the cities, you know, if you have a certain traffic level between, you know, 10,000 and 15,000, right. like this, this may work for you. Yeah. And, um, and, and, but when you're in a small town and there's only one road going through, right. that's when maybe it's not, not a great case because right. and you it, have. It, it might not be a great case. It might be. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it might it's kind be. of a Absolutely. case by case, right? It and, is a case by case. Yeah. I, I see it not being a good case when, and we'll, this is where we segue into firefighters, mm. um, I see it as not being a good case when you are restricting traffic too much right. and you could potentially impact emergency vehicles. Now, that is not the case in the vast majority of any of these road diet situations. Absolutely. So, like we mentioned, in Los Angeles, there's currently a big debate over this right now. I want to read a little bit from uh, an LA Times article here that was kind of highlighting this. Um, we'll put the link to the full article if you're interested in reading it. Um, but 
The United Firefighters of Los Angeles City Local 112 plans on spending six figures on a campaign against Measure HLA, which would require the installation of hundreds of miles of new bike lanes, bus lanes, and other transportation improvements on designated boulevards that undergo major repairs. Union President Freddie Escobar said that his organization, which represents about 3,400 firefighters, is concerned that the measure will lead to slower emergency response times and put pressure on a city budget already experiencing financial strain. Fire trucks are already being hindered by road diets, reductions in vehicle lanes caused by the creation of bike or bus lanes, Escobar said in an interview. Quote, every second counts. The road diets slow down our firefighters, Escobar said, and it will be so much worse with HLA. Uh, Backers of Measure HLA denounced the move by the union, saying the ballot proposal is urgently needed to reduce the number of deaths on LA streets. Last year, 336 people died in traffic fatalities, more than half of them being pedestrians, and those deaths now exceed the number of homicides in the city. Oh. Um, so 336 folks died in traffic fatalities last year. Half of them being pedestrians is that is notable. That's really shocking. Yeah, what does surprise me with the firefighters is that so many cities have adopted the sort of Vision Zero and Safe Streets policies. And for those who don't know, Vision Zero is the idea of um, having zero traffic fatalities, whether that is cyclists or um, pedestrians or in a vehicle. So you would think that our emergency management systems would be in support of this. Right. But I do understand part of the argument mm -hmm. that, yes, uh, reduce lanes could impact emergency uh, vehicle response times. However, anybody who's driven in LA, there are no shortage of roads. Right. And if they're gonna spend $100,000 on a campaign against this measure, right. I feel like the time could be better spent working with the city to designate emergency vehicle lanes across the town. Right, or and, even, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all about how you design these, I would yeah. say, right? Like, like, is there a way to design this that would make it more difficult for emergency vehicles? Totally. But if you're in the planning phase right now, there is totally a way to design it so that it actually could improve for emergency vehicles. Like, especially like one of the things that the, the union president specifically mentioned there was bus lanes. Yeah. A bus lane would be a fantastic way for a fire truck to get through. Whether like a be, city bus and a fire truck are about the same size. Right, it's right. not like it, and, it can't use the lane. And, and like whether it be that the fire truck just uses the bus lane to get through and or like that lane is space for cars to move out of the way for the fire truck to get through. I mean, you could say the same thing about certain bike lanes. Now, do I think that there are bike lanes that could be put in that would hinder the response time if it was done incorrectly? Yes, but so many of the even like permanently curb protected bike lanes that I see are literally designed so that they are mountable for this specific reason so that a fire truck, an ambulance, which generally have much wider wheelbases, they have big tires, can drive up over these things and use them in the event of an emergency to be able to kind of go and get through. It's a similar functionality to the flexi post. Mm -hmm. Like a, an emergency vehicle can go through flexi post mm -hmm. if needed. I see it all the time. Mm -hmm. We have a protected, or not protected lane, we have a uh, express lane on Mopac here in Austin that's just flexi post all the way down. And when there's an accident, police are directing people through the flexi post or police are moving into the flexi post. Mm -hmm. That is a viable way to create separated lanes and allow for emergency vehicles. Right. And to mention one more point on this that's actually tied into the kind of first example we gave with Barton Springs Road, when the initial survey went out on that, that was one of the concerns raised by respondents. And what did the city do? They basically like spoke with the people in order to make this possible so that that lane, the bike, the bike lane that's there, is designed so that emergency vehicles can use it. Um, built with flex posts, it's built with those armadillos, fire trucks can drive over those yeah. easily in, in, a, in a pinch, or cars can move into that area uh, if they need to. So, yeah. And cyclists and, and, and pedestrians are going to get out of the way right. of these emergency vehicles. <laughs> right. They're not going to you know stand their ground and, and wait for it to... They're honestly going to gonna get out of the way much easier than yeah. a car would. Uh, exactly. It, like, you can literally just like move a couple steps over versus trying to move your giant metal box car over yeah. <laughs> out of the way somewhere. It's a lot easier to move a person or a bike out of the way. Uh, than it is than it is a car. So that one that one surprised me a little bit. I don't know. Um, I I understand the concern, but again, to your point, like instead of spending all of this time on a campaign against it, why not just like go speak with your city leaders and and try to come up with a happy medium so that it right. can improve both the safety on the roadways, which which would hopefully need less emergency response, 
because less people are getting hit by cars or, or whatever. Are you and... suggesting compromise? <laughs> In this economy? In this economy, yeah, yeah. I, I, unfortunately, it's rare these days, but I am. The firefighter yeah. union in LA is not the only one either. The new Waverly story, the firefighter, fighter, fighter, firefighter union was also against the, uh, the road dieting there. Um, however, their police union, completely silent on it. Interesting. So they weren't going to take sides. Yeah. I mean, frankly, I think, I think them not taking sides is probably the, probably the right move. I think you should be behind closed doors speaking with the people making those decisions on how you can make it better for the community that you serve. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that feels common sense to me. But who am I? Just the, just the guy on this couch. <laughs> Every city could be like Salt Lake City with 200-foot-wide <laughs> avenues at every intersection. Salt Lake City could literally have dedicated first responder lanes and traffic wouldn't be affected probably. You never You notice. could have car lanes, first responder lane, bus lane, bike lane. Yeah. You could have multiple pedestrian lanes, like one for grandmothers, one for like <laughs> quick gay iced coffee walkers. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll get there. Um, well, uh, I think that's a good spot to, to wrap this one up. Um, if you uh, are not subscribed to us uh, here, if you're watching on YouTube, consider subscribing. If you're listening, you can go ahead and give us a five-star rating uh, because, let's be honest, I mean, I think... I think <laughs> <laughs> well, except four with a comment. Four with a comment, sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, please consider sharing this with your friends. We've been super excited about the response to all this so yeah. far. Um, we've been gaining more and more listens and views. Um, it, it does not go unnoticed. Uh, we are putting some time and effort into making this better. I bought, uh, despite this this podcast generating uh, negative revenue, because we definitely <laughs> spent a lot of time and, and money making some of this happen, uh, I bought a new toy that is going to make these a lot more fun in the future. This is a 360 camera. Um, some of it might have been featured in this, because I think I'm going to go for a bike ride after this and uh, go show you all some of the improvements on some of the streets we talked about in this episode. So we don't have to sit on the couch and talk about it. You mm -hmm. can literally go with us and see everything that we are seeing. Exactly. And we're going to try to play around with some fun formats with this. I, I just kind of ad-libbing that we're going to do this. I wasn't planning on showing this, but <laughs> might as well. Um, so if you want to see some fun stuff with a 360 camera, let us know. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, though. We really appreciate it. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Transit Tangent Tuesday. Yeah, I'm saving that dough. Public transit's where it's at. Watch me go.